what's this guy doing? Why did Google think on air sign triple sided that this was the image? <laughs> Somebody is incorrectly tagging. Yeah. What is, the, what is this? It's like some zodiac chart. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Mm hmm. Google, you still got some stuff to work out here, Palo. Uh, I always wonder uh, how much of Google, you know, they, they make the claim that it's not manual, right? I just can't picture that because I had a friend that worked at like a major internet company. I'm not going to mention it because I don't know if it's smart to mention it, <laughs> but a major internet company and their whole job, their entire job was tagging searches. So they would take the raw search input for customers that didn't like get to where they they needed to go and then they would map it in so when people were searching like it would go to this thing so if you misspelled something or if you had intent behind your search that wasn't clear to the the engine there was just this whole giant list of like oh they meant that they meant that they meant that and uh i'm just so curious i i, I know google says all the time it's all automated. We don't have any curation or control over it. I think that's BS. I really do. I don't think NLP is at the point yet. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Do you know anything about this, Noah? Uh, a little bit. Um, most of it's based on tagging. So there's the the general consensus of don't tag bomb your stuff. So if, if you are selling something, say, for example, a blender, you wouldn't tag it with all the stuff for every single kitchen appliance. So you don't, you know, make like some white text on there and just start filling in things. Right, exactly. Yeah, like that's that's how you get basically axed out of the Google search results. Because if, if it's too generic um, and too widespread of a tag, then they essentially rank you very, very low. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're too specific, you get very, very low because not everyone will search those terms. So it's... Uh, I think the idea of like tagging and meta tagging when it comes to search results is kind of funny to begin with because if you go too far one way, you're basically spamming tags. And if you go too far the other way, no one's going to find your stuff. Mm. And you think none of it, I mean, what about the automation stuff? Is it automated? Uh, to a certain extent, I think it is. Um, but a lot of it's up to the content creators as well to, to actually, not content creators, just like, like YouTubers, for example, but content in general, people who author the pages. Um, like when you use like a CMS system, like Drupal, for example, you tag the page based on that and it adds it into like your SEO terms. Um, I would say to a certain extent, the automation breaks down when you can hire companies for like SEO optimization, because they essentially just basically tag spam your page for you. Right. Uh, just like oh this 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 uh, this page is primarily a dark mode color, so we're gonna tag it dark mode. You know what I mean? Like they'll they'll basically try to be as vague as possible with the tags to fit. Um, I don't think at like the Google level, for example, the DuckDuckGo level or whatever Ask.com. I I don't think that there's a manual portion of that. If there is, that's like deep web style manual portion. Like we would never really know because that's that's obviously illegal for one, but. There is a whole bunch of people who do black hat SEO, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they do live in places like the deep web or dark web or whatever you, that thing is where you have to type in onion in front of the thing. And it's interesting because like I, I used to be a part of a mastermind group where that would come up from time to time. Um, and we never really engaged in it because it was just like, well, what are you going to do with that? You know, like, do you really want to run the risk? But there were people that would do that would know the trick. And they would just like sell it for this unreal amount of money. Like go on there. You say, I want, I want SEO, whatever uh, juice on my page. And like, there would be all these crazy tricks, right? Um, like there was a uh, one person I had talked to that had this thing called a PBN. Have you ever heard of that term? No, I have not. Private blog network. That's what it stands for. Because what you are able to do is Google will not, they don't love, um, new content like they it takes a long time for content to like enter in they'll crawl it but once they crawl it like you're not like in the you're, you're in the library but you're not like the librarian doesn't give a crap about you so in order to get you the impression that the librarian should care about I don't know how to say this right in order to make it so like you seem like you're relevant content people will stand up these private blog networks they're basically 
servers upon servers like like uh, I'm sure we can find a diagram of it um, they're like these circles of servers um, that at basically s like send all your all this traffic into one site so this would be like one idea is a PBN like this so you'd have like 10 of these blogs that are all pointing at your business saying things and you get copywriters in that publish these garbage articles on these 10 sites that nobody ever reads but Google sees all this traffic in incoming and this is this is like the dummy way to do it the real way is has been shown to me and it's like it's crazy it's like it's like not just one of these layers it's all these PBNs all these these like blog 9 here would have another 10 sites pointing at it and then by the time it gets up here you have like all this link juice and your site ranks number one on Google within like a month crazy and I don't that know if this still like, works I would imagine it does people on the on those like shady sites will sell you those they'll sell you placement on them or they'll they'll like spin one up for you and you you spend like an unreal amount of money. I mean, you're talking like five figures to get one of those set up and then they put all the content on there and they keep, you know, sticking content in. Here we go. That's what, that's what they look like right here. Main website with two tiers of traffic being thrown into. That is intense. Yeah. But it was a way to get around Google because how is Google supposed to know this isn't legitimate? This has all well, the, the hallmarks yeah, of legitimacy. Well, they, they have certain ways of knowing, but. They have to be manual, right? Yeah, it's a manual judgment at some point. Yeah, and it might be like a manual. You can, automate, you can automate detection to be like, hey, yo, we noticed that this site basically feeds, like, if like if they actually like do like a like a link map almost like a site map of a site's content and it see that it links out to like three hundred different sites, there's a good chance you can probably say that that's like PBN status. Yeah. If it's like, oh, this links up to the same site five thousand times across <laughs> their own thing, then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> the flag shows up somewhere some right some poor like intern has to figure it out yeah i saw a pretty good ted talk about how uh like business results like on google can easily be like hijacked and the guy did a perfect example he like just made 10 fake listings and when you searched a specific service in his city you got all of the 10 listings that just all went to the same one service for the phone number and he just hijacked this from somebody else yeah you just make all you do is it's the same idea you make 10 business pages essentially and say yeah i'm at this address this is the service i do and then and google's while, like sure <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. seems they legitimate don't, like, they don't approve it like they don't like vet it to see if it's a legitimate business for example and it's, that's actually a common practice in like um high populated areas for like similar competitive similar competitive services so businesses will create multiple pages and the phone numbers that they do and all they do is pay for a number forward so if you call one number it's going to ring the specific business on this side that's actually one of the one of my one of my uh, people that i knew that's what they did for local search yeah. that was all they focused on was local search yeah um man what a nutty thing when you have like just people gaming these things so hard you wonder with the resources that something like google has like isn't it just as like smart of them just to do it all manually <laughs> right because that's like do you do you know much about amazon yeah a little bit a little bit so amazon was my game when i took that one year away from streaming that's what i was doing yeah yeah and i learned a lot about amazon to the point where like i don't really buy stuff on amazon unless it's a name brand anymore because yeah. i know like the manufacturing end now and i'm just like this stuff is garbage. This is like absolute garbage quality stuff 99% of the time. And what's happening is somebody like me or you has got an extra $10,000 laying around. You go to Alibaba, you buy some stuff. It comes in uh, a shipping crate. You send it to Amazon. You slap a label on it. And like you're, if that product were to kill someone, um, what are you going to go after? This guy's LLC that has $0. It's not a real company. Right. And like you can go on there and look for things like, um, like mugs or something. Like go look up like a, a a vacuum sealed water bottle, right? Yeah. And you'll see essentially the same exact one being sold by 10, 20 brands, and they just don't care. It's the same exact one, and they're just competing against price. 
And like, how do you separate that from a mug like a Yeti or something that actually is quality? I don't know. So Crace thinks that Google is 100% automated. I don't think it is. I think they tell people that, Crace. And I don't think that they've ever had to undergo an audit that would that would uh, expose it. So because they, they're not losing money. They don't have investors that would give a crap. They can make these statements publicly um, because if you're curating content individually, you're in trouble because you're essentially censoring. And you that means that there's people in the company that can promote content. There's people in the company that can shut down content. Like, so you could you could go get a job at Google that you're just like a, a, a mole or whatever that's called and, and just like selling out that thing. People used to do that. There was this big internet thing uh, back uh, probably before 2010 um, called uh, DMOZ. And DMOZ is still a thing. It still exists. If you knew somebody at DMOZ or somebody that had the ability to add things to DMOZ, um, DMOZ would be like the catalog catalog of record for like Yahoo and Google search and Alta Vista and all these things. You could get something stuck in there in DMOZ and immediately get tons of traffic on it. So I think that they are just trying to avoid that situation because people pay a lot of money for those postings, like thousands of dollars just to get into DMOZ. Um, I don't know. That's not, that's got to still be around, but I don't think it's relevant anymore. <clears throat> so I think that like if Google publicly stated, yes, we do have people manually going through things, they run into the problem of like some crazy right wing person saying, yeah, and you're censoring us, which actually came up in Congress. Uh, that was a, that's, you can go on C-SPAN and watch that. I remember that. Yep. I watched that whole thing and it was very compelling. Yeah. It was very compelling to make the case that like essentially because of the way Google was presenting information to people, um, an independent review showed an independent political review. Like, like they're not Republicans or Democrats. I think in fact they were Democrats. Uh, they they were on the they were on the side that would have not wanted this to be true, and they figured out that something like uh, that Hillary Clinton received X number more votes because of bias in search, and that was amazing to see. And like I don't know what Congress is going to do with that, but that's probably the closest Google has ever be ever come to an audit. Yeah, but they haven't been audited, right? They, they're they not in financial trouble, so the shareholders aren't going to vote for it. Um, they're not yet breaking any federal laws or anything like that, so they're not going to get in trouble for that. Uh, but a good example of a company that was faking it and got audited uh, was, um, uh, what was that one? Theramos. Ther- Theramos? Um, talking about the, the what company are you talking about well, like when they faked all their results and stuff it was this brilliant lady who was yeah, yeah, seen yeah. as like the Theranos, next theranos 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 yeah, yeah. The, the cheap the cheap lab testing lady yeah and so theranos would yeah. essentially they, they said well there was a brilliant idea it was a definitely a great vision and they they probably could have gotten there eventually um but eventually might have been 30 years from now right but their idea was that you would have these things that were like the sizes of printers that could rapidly and automatically um, figure out all these like 200 or 300 different lab tests. And they can- Yeah, from one sample. From one sample, yeah. Right, and, the trick there is one sample. Yeah, but the, the thing of it is, is like in reality, they were taking more blood than they said they were supposed to and whatever, but the idea was you would have one of these things in your house. That was the long-term vision. And that like, you would just prick your finger every day and stick your, your sample into this thing in your house and it would spit out like here's your cholesterol and here's your blood sugar and all these different like very rel- relevant things, even things like cancer detection um, because realistically the an average person gets their blood drawn and tested maybe once a year and you're kind of at the whim of the doctor to whatever test they want to run. Um, so this was a way to bypass that. Now what, what Theranos was doing is they said they were using these printer-sized analysis devices um, and the investors kind of – one of the investors like caught wind – because he went to like a Walgreens or somebody that they're piloting with and realized that the, this wasn't the process that it was supposed to be. It was like way too much blood being drawn and it just wasn't the right process. And it took too long to get the results if this were the right thing. And they, they ended up doing an audit and the audit found that they were just a traditional lab. They were a traditional lab with traditional people screening all these things out the traditional way. And they weren't in fact this other thing that they claimed to be. Uh, they weren't automated at all. They had thousands of people working for them. And uh, I think they're she's in jail and so is the COO now 
because they defrauded investors or like was indicted or something you know maybe under indictment and i'm wrong she's not in jail she just had to pay a butt ton of money yeah crazy right like yeah. but that that shows you like the egregiousness of lying to people and they they got her on defrauding so again i don't know if google will ever have to the fess up to anything and, and i could be a million percent wrong i could be just on the complete wrong of this that they don't do any of this stuff you know um that everything is man or everything is automated and whatever i just i just don't see like if that problem was solved you would see the that solution emerge i feel like so much stronger than it does right now like they kind of they don't have anything else that's automated to that level and they don't have that curation stuff done to that level like you just if you have new things that you're looking for the search what i'm trying to say is the search the search results are stinky they don't they're not great like you have to go through a lot of search results until you find what you're looking for yeah and i and i think you and i and I, I think that they change it based on what you're searching for like news for example yes. is a really good example <clears throat> right. i think so that that part's on news that's yeah. pretty real time you know that's pretty accurate plus or minus like two three hours right when i want to look up news i normally go to twitter like if if there's like police activity somewhere i'm on my way to work or something or if i see a bunch of crap going down somewhere local i'll go to twitter it's the first thing i'll go because people actually end up posting about it and then you'll see links about it faster than you would on like google search results so there's like a little bit of catch up but yeah i 100 percent. there's definitely catch up um I don't think I've ever seen, actually I can test it. I'm gonna go look for something on Google News, just search a random thing, sort by most recent, and then click on it and see what the article publish time was. Because the, the thing that I wonder is when they say, like when I search on Google in the news, you can pick like how recent news you want. I don't know if that's based on the index time or if that's based on like the article's publish time. Do you know what I mean? It's gotta be the publish time. All right, but then that means how is that means Google has to basically read the article and know where it is the publish time is, and depending on the site, that publish time could be free text and someone's paragraph. Well, they make you use schema to get into that stuff, right? So that goes back to the SEO thing, then, right? Ah, uh, because I know schema is something that like doesn't Google run schema.org? Oh, I don't know if they run it. There's a surprisingly large amount of schema. Like, and people don't take advantage of it. Right. You know, like there's even schema for weird stuff like email that if you wanted to have a second layer of schema underneath an email, you could. And people just don't use it because there's no endpoint application. Like, I guess you could, tr you could, you could probably build a whole application up around that about like a new way to do email where it was all schema based and like, um, if you're offering items, like they show up a certain way because Google has that to some extent. If you've ever received an email that says it has a button in the corner and then maybe they stopped doing it because I haven't seen one in a long time, but it would be like this thing where like you would embed it and say like you have a bill to pay. So click on this link and you can embed in the email schema. Here's the bill and a link to it. And then your email would have this thing in the corner on Gmail that would say like pay the bill. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen those before. I haven't seen it in very, very long. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long stopped. time. They may have pulled it. Yeah. We did some, I remember that, though. We did some tests that. with Badger, right? Like, that we were yeah. trying to take yeah. advantage of it or something. Yeah. So, like, I just searched IBM because we, we were talking about Plex earlier, right? So, I just searched IBM and Google News, and I sort by Pat, I sort by most recent. Ten minutes ago is one of the articles that came up, and I click into the article, and it's got a published time of 25 minutes ago. So, do you so there's, like, a 15-minute lag on news searches so do you think that they're scrubbing that or do you think it's just the i think they're that prioritizing it's like that hitting rss or something yeah i think they're probably they probably have a fast track because it's uh, most of these things are like larger news things like washington post business insider mm -hmm. ladders you know it's not like ma and pa type little little tiny ones ma and the old ma and pa yeah. news organizations right so I, I would imagine that there is some type of prioritization based on how you create the actual content, not necessarily where it's coming from. 
So I would imagine that Business Insider, for example, has their own tried and true formula that gets them quick into the results. Same with like yeah. TMZ, right? And if they you probably pay, up any type of Hollywood they probably pay scandals. a lot of money to figure that right. out. It's all proprietary and yeah. Yeah. And then you see the same thing though. And like, if, if a, like when a celebrity dies, for example, the very first places you normally hear it are from like big three, you know, you'll hear it from like TMZ first. I get all my news from, uh, from discord. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Just, <laughs> the, only, the only place I go for my news. Yeah. Most of the, like I do Reddit most of the time. Cause most of the times if something big happens, someone will put, start a post about it. It takes off real quick. Reddit has gotten weird. IMO. We just throw that you out. Gotta, you got to have the right subreddits. So that's the big You got to have the right Reddit, subreddits. So. Reddit in yeah. general, to me, is. Uh, it's funky. It's weird. Got weird. Yeah. And no, I agree. It's funky. <laughs>